I first saw 3D when I looked into the pages of Three Dimension Comics in 1953. I was six years old and it was my first religious experience. My religion was confirmed when I went to the movie theater and saw it came from outer space. And when those meteors blasted out at me and those aliens doubled up, it was all over for me. I was a confirmed stereopath. And I have been very fortunate for the past 20 years to make a living making 3D and promoting it and sharing it. 3D of photography and over 130 3D comic books. That's my passion and I'm one of the lucky ones because my hobby is also my living. And it all requires two eyes. It requires 3D glasses most of the time and a lot of them are red and blue. A few million red and blue glasses. I've been lucky to work on characters like Superman, Batman, Flash Gordon, Donald Duck, Mickey Mouse and The Simpsons and put them into three dimensions. My name is Daniel Sims, S-Y-M-M-E-S. -M -M -E I'm president of Dimension Three. We're doing nine programs for ABC's 3D Week, which will be aired in May. Uh, this is the eighth show we will have shot so far, and uh, perhaps one of the more fun shows, because uh, they've designed some uh, interesting 3D gags that uh, are kind of part of the story and uh, should be a lot of fun for the audience. Uh, my name is uh, Chris Condon. Um, I got started in my first professional 3D in 1953, therefore I'm commonly known as the grandfather of 3D. I've been involved in over 50 3D motion picture projects. We have a special camera system which is composed of two film cameras mounted in a special configuration which allows them to record, much like your eyes see things, Two lenses, two cameras, two eyes, and the two cameras record a left eye, right eye film, which becomes tape. We then combine those two images into one 3D image with our patented encoding system. And then the home audience wears 3D glasses and is able to see the scene just like your eyes will see it now, which is in three dimensions. My former son-in-law and I took a very strong interest in 3D at that time. And because I had the optical manufacturing expertise, we decided to make a 3D camera system that was very simple. A single camera system would, that would do a good job. So um, we developed it. I had my own optical and mechanical workshop at the time. And we developed the system and we thought it was very good, very simple and very good. And we made a demonstration reel that ran around 10 minutes, a little science fiction footage from some motorcycle footage and whatever, and we start showing it to the industry, all, all the low budget, not the majors. Uh, they all liked it. We had maybe 20, 30 different companies come in and see it. They loved it. And then they, they, we'd say, well, how about making a movie in this process? they say, well, we don't know. Do you have to wear the glasses? They gave all sorts of reasons why not to shoot a 3D movie. Uh, until a gentleman by the name of Lou Scherer, who owned 44 theaters in this country, mostly in Ohio, Indiana, Illinois, Tennessee, California, uh, and Arizona. And he had an art theater guild showing mostly foreign films. And uh, at that time, business had been declining in motion picture theaters. They started showing some foreign films that were pretty racy. One was called I Am Curious Yellow. Had a little bit of implied sex and whatever. And that, those are the kind of pictures that uh, Mr. Cher and others in that era were playing. So anyway, he came down to see our process and he liked it very much. And he asked us what we had in mind. He said, we want to do a science fiction film, a tongue in cheek comedy science fiction film. And uh, my son-in-law gave a budget figure, way too low. <laughs> but anyway, we made a deal, a one page deal. and. Um, we start shooting the science fiction film. About the third day of shooting, one of the actors said, you know, there's a man over in Santa Monica that's also putting out a 3D movie, a name by, man by the name of Paul Roos, who I knew very well, very expert technical person. Anyway, we, he, we told him that since Paul Roos was making a 3D movie, we better cut the science fiction thing out and do something very simple because we wanted to be first in the market. 
So Mr. Sher asked me, what do you want to do? I said, well, let's do something real simple, the stewardesses. What do stewardesses do when they're not flying? Well, they go home and they take a shower, and you see they're behind and they're bust. You know, it was a, actually a peeping Tom film about these various stewardesses. So we went ahead and did it, and uh, it did pretty good business. As it turned out, we embellished a picture with a storyline, and it became the sixth highest grossing picture of 1971 in the United States, $26 million box office gross. We made a lot of money. Of course, we foolishly invested it. The rest is kind of history. The first one I, of course, recall seeing was uh, The Mask in 1960. Uh, it was an anaglyphic film, meaning you wore red and blue glasses. Um, and it just absolutely blew me away. Uh, I had been expecting it to look like it did, and it was, and I was just so excited. I, could, I told everybody, my schoolmates, and they go, huh, what are you talking about, what's 3D? And um, so by the time I was writing about it and breathing it and carrying on, I knew I was going into the film industry in camera work, cameraman. So uh, I went into the Army, came out of the Army, and the very first thing I started working on was the stewardesses. And at X in those days, today it would be an R-rated film. Um, I worked with Chris Condon. We co-formed a company called Stereovision, uh, which made that film. And so immediately, as they say, shot right out of the cannon, I'm making 3D movies. Uh, we managed to license uh, from Warner Brothers House of Wax, and we did the 1972 reissue of House of Wax at the Chinese Theater just down the block. Uh, first time it had played in 70 millimeter because of the format we used, and the first time the Chinese Theater had ever done a, a reissue movie, let alone a 3D movie. A new 3D had never played there before, so we had a great premiere with the Klieg lights and the whole thing, and it was just absolutely, I couldn't believe it. Here I am, a 20, I think I was 21 years old or something at the time. Hey, you couldn't touch me, you know, tss, I, Mr. 3D here. <laughs> I'm a 3D maniac. He certainly I love is. anything 3D. Comic books, holograms, but especially 3D movies. I'm on cloud nine, and I'm not going to come down for the rest of my life from what I've seen here for the past eight days. I'm not done yet, and I'm popping both eyes open to see all this amazing 3D. Just saw the rarities program. With 3D footage from the 1920s, I thought I would never, ever see. But dreams come true, and I, we're living it here now. Ooh, and there's movies that look like that? Much better, because the movie, things come out of the screen at you and so on. I was totally blown away. Just, I mean, that's the only word I can think of, because it, it fits. I just, wow, magic. These, this little cardboard viewer makes all of this happen for you.